Damn, this card is freaking fast, you guys, okay? Spoiler alert, it's 30 to 40% faster than the 3090 Ti in 4K. But when I enable DLSS 3.0, Oh man, it took this card to the next level, okay? Wait till you see the performance numbers. So with that said, in this video, I'll be focusing mostly on ray tracing and the LSS 3.0 performance. So here are the specs I'm using for these tests. A 12900K stock with 32 gigs of DDR5 memory, running on a 5600 megahertz kit with CL timing. XMP has been enabled and we are achieving these speeds successfully on Windows 11. So DLSS performance is the first thing we're gonna test on the RTX 4090. And for those of you who've been living under a boulder the past few years and don't know what DLSS is, it's an AI software that boosts performance of your games while maintaining great image quality and responsiveness. And now the new DLSS 3 takes it even further by using AI to create entirely new frames instead of just more pixels. Basically, it will downscale the resolution of your game and upscale the quality to give you the same gaming experience as if you were playing on a higher resolution, but without the negative impact on performance. So the first game we're testing is Cyberpunk 2077. This is pretty much like the staple of all benchmarks when we're comparing ray tracing with any DLSS software. It's such a beautiful game too. So in native 4K, ultra settings, with RTX and DLSS off, we are getting an average of 108 FPS. Turning on ray tracing and ultra settings, we dipped all the way down to 39 FPS, but with DLSS 3 enabled in performance mode, we got an average FPS of 145, you guys. That is about a 25% gain from native 4K and 73% from ray tracing alone. Now, this was tested on the in-game benchmark of Cyberpunk. It's basically baked inside the game. Also, please note that I'm using OBS to capture the gameplay. Uh, so the performance numbers of the actual gameplay will not match the actual performance that I recorded because when I use OPS, I do take a performance hit, unfortunately. All right, so how does this actually affect the graphics of the game when you enable DLSS 3.0? Well, here's what Cyberpunk looks like in native 4K resolution with ray tracing enabled. And here is the same game in 4K with ray tracing, but with DLSS 3.0 enabled in performance mode. You probably can't tell the difference right off the bat. They pretty much look identical. So let's put up a side-by-side -side comparison and look at the shadows casted by the palm trees. If you look closely, you can kind of see the edges of the shadows are slightly sharper with ray tracing only, and the edges are slightly softer with DLSS 3 enabled. Nothing really crazy to complain about, they both look pretty good. Now when we zoom in on the palm trees in the back, we can still see how DLSS 3 maintain most of the details and the shadows. But if you look at the windows near the palm tree, you can see that some of the metal frames or whatever those are between the windows are not that visible. DLSS 3 wasn't able to completely recover that during the upscale. I mean, this is stuff you're not gonna notice while you're focused in playing the game. I wanna make that clear. This is not gonna affect your gameplay whatsoever. The reason why I'm showing you these comparisons is so that we can actually see how well the AI technology upscales the content, and so far it's doing a pretty damn good job. All right, let's look at a different comparison in the same game. So this is with ray tracing in native 4K resolution. And here is ray tracing with DLSS 3 enabled. Again, very similar in quality for the most part. Now, if you zoom in on my car, you can see the reflection of the stripes on the ground from the side of my car on both comparisons without any loss of detail. However, if we look at the ground, we can see that the texture is missing from the DLSS 3 capture. In this example, the further away the textures are, the more details you begin to lose. Zooming all the way back out, you can't even notice the difference, even though you know exactly where to look. But look at the pawn shop over there in the back. If we zoom in, we can actually see the cage very clearly on both. It was able to keep most of the extra textures after upscaling. I think DLSS 3 does a fantastic job on upscaling the content for Cyberpunk 2077, and it's a no-brainer that you should enable DLSS 3 to take advantage of that extra 106 FPS. All right, moving on to Unreal Engine 5 Lyra. This is another title that supports both ray tracing and DLSS 3. So in native 4K, I recorded an average FPS of 66, and with ray tracing enabled, in the LSS3 performance mode, we shot all the way up to 162, you guys, more than doubling the freaking FPS. And I gotta be honest here, I couldn't even tell a difference in quality. The game is more on the simple side, graphically speaking, which is probably one of the reasons why, but still, a 60% performance uplift by turning on a setting is pretty awesome. 
Moving on to a new game coming out on October 18th called A Plague Tale Requiem. This was actually a very fun game for me to test out. The story kind of sucked me into the game and I kind of lost track benchmarking it for a bit. But anyways, with native 4K resolution, I was getting only 71 FPS in ultra settings. This game does not support ray tracing, but it does support DLSS 3. So with that selected, we more than doubled our FPS to 149, which is absolutely nuts, you guys. That's 53% more frames. But what's even more nuts is that for the life of me, I can't find the difference in quality between native and DLSS 3. I mean, you guys can be the judge here. Look at the way the sun hits the sand on the beach and creates this beautiful golden glow. It looks exactly the same on native 4K. The details of the boat and the shadows are nearly identical. I even zoomed in on the mountains in the back. And the only thing I've noticed is that there is slightly more contrast on the native 4K capture. You can kind of see what I'm talking about when looking at the rocks in the back. But I mean, this is impressive. Same quality, double the performance, pretty much. If this is the type of performance uplift we can experience by simply checking off an option in settings, then guys, we should be all very excited to see what Nvidia can do for the next gen titles. Here's another clip from the same exact game. Again, pretty much neck and neck in terms of picture quality. Zooming in on the rocks in the back, we can still see a bunch of detail in the bricks. And look at the shadows. They actually take the real shape of the object casting the shadows. That is freaking cool. The last game we're looking at is F1 22. But this time I want to see the difference in performance between RTX on by itself and RTX on with DLSS 3. So I ran the benchmark with ray tracing on in 4K resolution with ultra settings, but I did not enable any of the DLSS features and we got an average FPS of 98. Simply turning on the LSS3 and putting on the super resolution to performance mode, we more than doubled the frames to 208. And when we compare the quality side by side, we see much of the same story. Zooming in on the numbers 50 and 100 in the back, we can see that both show very good detail. But if you focus on the shape of the circle and the actual numbers, you can see that the edges are slightly sharper on ray tracing without the LSS enabled. You also lose a bit of detail from the tire marks on the tracks. Now, if you pay attention to the shadows and reflections of the light bouncing off the race car and the tires, we can see slightly more detail on the racetrack from native 4K with ray tracing enabled. The textures on the racetrack are also more sharper. Same thing with the shadows. It's more defined on native 4K ray tracing as opposed to DLSS in comparison, where the edges of the shadows are more soft and feather-like. But again, it's not something you're gonna notice while you're actually playing the game. And finally, let's take a look at a 3D Mark benchmark that was designed to test DLSS performance. With DLSS off, we were getting 53 FPS, and when we turned it on, we nearly tripled to 154. This is 4K settings, by the way. This was actually a very beautiful benchmark. So much attention to detail, the creativity that went into this, the reflections. There were just so many reflections, but we're gonna focus on this scene where the plane is landing. You can see the reflections of the landing zone off the side of the ship, but when you zoom in closer to the ground, the texture is missing. You can't see the individual lines on the landing pad from the native 4K benchmark, but you can actually see them on the DLSS capture. So I was actually able to maintain that detail. When we look at this scene of the people waiting for the ship to dock, we can see the same detail in both. Reflections off the ground, the creases in the clothes, I mean the shadows from the people, all the detail is there. Only difference is that one of them, you get one third of the FPS. So yes, impressive DLSS 3 performance coming from the RTX 4090, but what I'm personally more excited about is Nvidia's optimizations for Nvidia Studio. If you're a content creator, owning a 40 series cards can help out your career. For starters, it's got dedicated hardware to accelerate 3D, video, and AI. Where this makes a pretty big impact on is Nvidia's broadcast, which is my favorite app for streaming. It allows me to remove the echo and all unnecessary background noise in my room. All right, here I am talking in the microphone. I got my purifier set to max right behind me. Um, I'm going to now enable noise removal and you guys can probably no longer hear the purifier in the background, thanks to Nvidia broadcast. Or add some blur in the background to focus the attention on me. I can even replace the background with anything I want or get rid of it altogether. The new 8th generation encoder with AV1 support helps run those features more efficiently. Video editors also get up to two times the speed in exports thanks to the dual encoder and up to two times AI tool performance. In fact, let's take a look at the new AV1 encoder right now. So here we are looking at two identical streams of Fortnite gameplay. 
One is using H.264, while the other is using the new AV1 encoder. Can you guys tell which is which? I mean, yeah, it's pretty obvious, right? It's night and day when it comes to streaming quality. H.264 is way too pixelated. There's a lot of encoding artifacts present when there's movement. AV1 was able to maintain consistent FPS with smooth graphics the entire time. Only when there isn't any movement, H.264 looks pretty good, as you can see during this gunfight when the person is standing still. Not only do you have a much more smoother stream, but the quality of the stream is also improved. If we zoom in on the crates on the dock, we can see more detail in the nets on the AV1 stream compared to H.264. This makes the streams much more enjoyable for your viewers, and that's because AV1 offers improved visual quality at the same bitrate as H.265 and 264. So you don't have to increase the bitrate of your streams anymore, you guys. You can actually lower the bitrate with AV1, and that will give you much smaller file sizes and faster upload times. I've also been playing Overwatch 2 recently on the 4090 with NVIDIA Reflex enabled. It makes such a huge difference in my reaction times. NVIDIA Reflex allows game developers to dramatically reduce latency in their games by up to two times. In competitive gaming, where every single millisecond counts, it's a game changer. You get to take advantage of all these with an NVIDIA 40 series card. But yeah, some pretty impressive stuff from NVIDIA, you guys. I can't wait to see how next-gen titles will take advantage of DLSS 3.0. This is quite literally going to change the way we play PC games, and I think that's something that we should all be very excited about. If you want to pick up one of these bad boys yourself, I'll drop a link to it down below. I will be doing a build with the 4090 very soon, so stick around for that. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.